My name is Chelsea Lee. I am a third generation metalsmith. My mother's name is Dana Lee. She is a jeweler. And my father, George Lee, is a ceramic artist. They are no longer married. I am a metalsmith and filmmaker. I am sharing my story as a descendant of many craftswomen from the maternal side of my family. I'm here at my art studio where I make my jewelry designs. I started making jewelry when I was about 20. My mom taught me and I also studied metalsmithing at the University of Georgia. Some of these tools were passed down to me from my mother and my grandmother. My name is Pat Duke and I'm Chelsea's grandmother and I became very interested in metals when I went back to graduate school at the University of Oklahoma. And so I got my degree in metals, small metals, working with silver and gold and setting stones. And I was in school for two or three years at, uh, on the graduate level and came back to Troy University to, to set up the first metals department there. So one of my very first students was Chelsea's mother, Dana Lee. All right, so I'm second generation jeweler. My mother, Pat Duke, is a jewelry professor at Troy State University. That's how I started jewelry and I loved it. And then I went to Germany later on in my life and studied a little bit over there and came back to the University of Georgia and studied under Gary Novke and went to Penland School of Craft and studied under a few jewelers, Hecky Seppa, Marianne Shear, and um, John Cogswell, names um, that people would know in the jewelry world. Anyway, I love it. I've been doing jewelry since 1978. I'm currently working as a diamond setter for Tom Shane and Shane Company in Duluth, Georgia and I'm hoping that will be my retirement job. It is very tedious and tiring, and uh, you have long hours, especially at Christmas time, but it's very rewarding to make something with your hands, and I hope that I pass this uh, knowledge on to my daughter, Chelsea, um, and my other people that I come in contact with that I can share my knowledge um, with. It's, very special to me and it's a big part of my life. Uh, a lot of my pieces, this, this wasn't made to be anything, but I guess it could be an awesome bracelet. But a lot of my pieces were done for demonstrations because I taught metal design at Troy, Troy University for 34 years. And um, so a lot of the things that you see here rejects or leftovers and, and samples that I did in my classes. Chelsea, do you remember when we had the four generation art exhibit uh, yeah. sponsored by mm -hmm. the Troy Arts Council? Right up and the road it, from here. it was Mama Alice mm -hmm. and me and your mother Dana yeah. and Chelsea. And I exhibited my, uh, Mom Allison exhibited her watercolor paintings and weavings. Mm -hmm. I exhibited my jewelry. Mm -hmm. And you did these fabulous drawings of people having little parties. tea parties. And you transferred them to material and made them into pillows. You sold every pillow at that exhibit. What was First, it? <laughs> it was at the it was at the emporium. What was it that my mom had in the exhibit? Your mom your mom exhibited uh, jewelry, jewelry and um, so it was, yeah, uh, Mama Alice's watercolors and your, weaving and weavings. Your jewelry designs, my mother's jewelry designs, and I was really little then. Right? You were yeah, you were little. I was like ten yeah. maybe. You were I think you were twelve. Twelve or thirteen. Okay. You loved to wear hats. I you wore hats. you wore a hat everything. And you remember your artist's name was Opalaka Lee? Oh, that's right. Yes. Opalaka Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and you signed everything Opalaka Lee and you sold every painting for $60 a piece. Yeah. 
My name is Patricia Alice Thornton. My mother was Alice Green Morgan Thornton, and my father was Van Monroe Thornton Sr. I have two children, Dana and a son, Patrick. Dana has two children, Chelsea Lee and Hunter Lee. This is the Pioneer Museum in Troy, Alabama, where my great-grandmother, Alice Thornton, worked as a living exhibit. During the summer, I assisted her as she would demonstrate the spinning wheel and loom. The visitors to the museum enjoyed seeing us work together. One of my primary tasks was gently pulling the seeds from the cotton. I also found satisfaction from using a raw plant material such as cotton and turning it into a functional item such as thread. There are not many people who know how to spin cotton thread. I'm grateful Alice Thornton taught me. Preparation of the material to spin was usually done at the end of the day while they were resting. Again, my name is Art McNatt. We're here in the area of the museum that's uh, what we call the textile part, where we have the quilters, but the main part here is the loom. And uh, here at the museum, we all remember Ms. Alice Thornton when she came in here and set this contraption together and got it to working. And I can just see her at the, at the helm of it now. Uh, and it seemed everything in that machine or that apparatus started moving. She was good at explaining all of that. She loved it. We could just, uh, we could see the pioneers making their fabrics that way. We started out making the thread, but the loom was the final destination to get something that you could wear. We grew up in an art in an artistic family. My father was an industrial arts instructor. Mother was an art teacher always. And there were always art supplies and things around. And the other thing is we were so poor that we couldn't afford to do anything that wasn't free. So we went to all of the exhibits that were free. We went to plays and concerts that were free. We were totally all exposed to art all of our lives. And going through a museum and, and looking and understanding the art became a part of my life. And I don't think I would have gone any other direction. It was just there. It was just natural. It was very natural, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I was born to be an artist. I just think it was available. If my mother had been a violin player, I probably would have played a violin. <laughs> I just don't do that. I'm grateful that my mother taught me to use a plasma torch at a young age. It gave me a great sense of confidence working with power tools. When I was in my early 20s at my mom's gallery, she told me, when I die, you aren't allowed to sell any of my tools, so you'd better learn how to use them. It was at this moment I realized the significance of these heritage tools and that they would be passed down to me that I did have to learn how to use these tools and that I have to preserve these tools for these tools had been passed down for multiple generations. I didn't come to metalsmithing right away, just like I didn't come to filmmaking right away. I came to it later. I've realized that filmmaking and metalsmithing can coexist together in one work. I'm thankful to my mother, Dana Lee, for teaching me the jewelry industry. I'm thankful to my grandmother, Pat Duke, for teaching me art lessons. I dedicate this film to Alice Thornton. Thank you.